This program is about one of the strongest Lancashire dialects, that of Wigan in the centre of the South Lancashire coalfield. It was spoken in all the districts around Wigan, the districts of Ince, Pemberton, Oral, Ashton in Makerfield, Garswood and Billinge, most of them densely populated at the time of the Industrial Revolution, when nine families out of ten were employed in either the coal mines or the cotton mills. Wigan had an abundance of both. It is perhaps in the rather isolated little hilltop of Billinge, four miles from Wigan Pier, that the dialect evolved to its peak. That is to say, that it reached a height of incomprehensibility which made it almost impenetrable to outsiders. In the scrutiny of the dialectal vocabulary and expressions which follow, some of the most colourful examples come from Billinge. There used to be hundreds of clearly definable dialects in Britain. Most of them are dying out or died out many decades ago. The advent of mass communication radio, TV, and now the internet, means that young people learn what is called standard English, which I have been speaking up to this point. Ah, well now, there's standard English, and there's northern English, or we say north country English. When I was young, in 1930s, there was no TV, and there was no internet, and uh, there was radio, already, but I mean, that took second place to the oral prowess of our parents, who used to give us advice and instructions. All the conversations were in dialect. And that was the language we used. I don't think I ever spoke anything but dialects until I was six. I dreamt in dialect. I whined in dialect, I cajoled in dialect, I persuaded in dialect, I complained in dialect, I planned my little revenges in the miner's tongue. And then when we went to school, we had to pay lip service to at least North Country English when we spoke with teachers or doctor or dentist, you know. Uh, but uh, it was that was it. I mean, there were three levels. There was dialect, there was North Country English, and there was Standard English. And of course, if we, we were somebody posh when we got a bit older, we had to uh, go back to Standard English, but whenever we could, as soon as we got home, we went back into the Corsi dialect. We're making this programme now because all over England, dialects are dying out. There are very few speakers of the Wigan dialect still alive. Perhaps a few dozen of us know the dialects in, to the full extent of its vocabulary, expressions, syntax. The BBC put on North Country plays, films. Um, they sometimes make real dialect speakers laugh or possibly cringe because very often they are not really using authentic dialect. They are using broad speech. E, I'll go that road with thee, lad. You know, that is not dialect. That is uh, English with a broad Yorkshire accent, for instance. Of course, one can't blame the BBC, because if they put on the films in real full-blooded dialect, uh, nobody would understand the programmes. People who are not born into a dialect may well ask, are dialects necessary? Are they useful? After all, Wigan people are no less skilled in vocabulary and spelling than anyone else. Why should a dialect live on? There are probably three reasons. One traditional, one emotive, and one aesthetic. As far as tradition is concerned, the Wigan dialect has a continuity of evolution 
equal to that of any other dialect in the country. We must remember that standard English itself is a dialect which happened to gain ascendancy in the 16th century. Secondly, there's the question of emotion. When dialect speakers are in calm discussion, they use standard English, or they try to. When they're heated, excited, overjoyed, or downright outraged, they lapse into dialect again. Thirdly, the aesthetic question. Dialects often have expressive or poetic terms which outshine standard English equivalents. A man may be tired, but the utter exhaustion of a Wigan miner after ten hours on the face is conveyed by words like powfagged or jiggered. Why say things when you can say tranquilments? or just rubbish when you can spit out the word pouse. Hopefully we shall record enough dialect in this program to preserve it for future generations. Perhaps you may never speak it, but at least you can enjoy its originality and admire its richness and humanity. <laughs>